Amazon SageMaker tutorial. So what is SageMaker? SageMaker is a fully managed machine learning service from AWS. Amazon SageMaker provides three main ways to work with machine learning, Studio Lab, Canvas and Studio. Studio Lab is a free service and you do not need an AWS account to work with it. Both Canvas and Studio need an AWS account. Canvas provides a visual interface for no code machine learning, while Studio is a fully featured IDE for machine learning. Let's start with Studio Lab. In AWS console, we are in Amazon SageMaker screen, and here you can see the options of Studio, Studio Lab, and Canvas. So let's hit the Studio Lab link. So this will open studiolab.sagemaker.aws URL. Remember that you can come to this URL directly and you do not need to go via AWS console. And here you need to request an account. And this is different from your AWS account and completely unrelated to it. Once your request is approved, you can sign in. Once you're logged in, you'll be presented with a screen where you can choose a compute type, CPU or GPU, and then hit start runtime. And once the runtime is ready, you can hit open project. Now, this will open our Amazon SageMaker Studio Lab. And you can see various options that you would find in a typical uh, Jupyter Notebooks environment. So let's look at the getting started notebook. There is some useful information there that you might want to read. But let's create a notebook with Python kernel. And here we plan to write a simple machine learning program. So let's rename our Jupyter notebook. We'll call it predict target. And next we will install scikit-learn, which we'll be using. Okay. Uh, now let's generate some training data here. Using a simple for loop, we generate some training data and our target is a simple equation. So our training input is A, B, C and D and our target is as per the equation. Okay. So time to train the model using linear regression where we pass train input and train target. So let's run that. And our training job has completed. Okay, time to test. We create our test data using values 10, 20, 30, and 40. And our prediction is 300, and which is on expected lines. As per the formula, 10 plus 2 times 20 plus 3 times 30 plus 4 times 40. That's 300. Okay, now that we are done with this. We can close the studio lab and stop the runtime. Let's look at SageMaker Canvas now. To use Studio or Canvas, the first thing we need to do is to create a SageMaker domain. So let's do that. Here we can choose Quick Setup or Standard Setup. We will use the Quick Setup option. Let's provide a domain name. We will call that Sage Domain 1. And along with the domain, user profile is created. Here you can create a role using Creation Wizard or choose existing role and then hit Submit. Now we will wait for our SageMaker domain to be created. So now our domain along with the user profile is ready. We can open Canvas via the Launch option or select the Canvas menu on the left-hand side with the user profile, hit Open Canvas and wait for infrastructure resources to be assigned to SageMaker Canvas application. So Amazon SageMaker Canvas opens and here you can see some sample data sets that are already available. Or by hitting the Import button, you can either upload your own data set or get it from S3. We will be using the Canvas Sample Maintenance data set. 
This has various columns like product ID type, air temperature, process temperature, rotational speed torque, and so on. But look at the failure type column. This will be our target column. It has values like no failure, power failure, and so on. Okay, now let's hit create a model. Uh, we will give it a name, something like um, maintenance underscore model. Okay. And hit create. So this is the build screen. And here we choose our target column, which is failure type. And you can see the value distribution below it. No failure, power failure, over strain failure. And you can hit data visualizer to visualize your data in a matrix or graphical format. In addition, there are filtering options, functions, and so on. Now, let's look at the build part. So, if you hit the quick build button, you'll get two options. Standard build for accuracy over speed and quick build for speed over accuracy. We will select the quick build option. Okay. And our model creation takes some time. So here our model is ready with 97.99% prediction accuracy. In addition, you can visualize the impact of features on prediction. For example, here we visualize impact of rotational speed on various failure types and so on. Okay, now we are ready to predict. So let's hit that predict button. We have the option of batch prediction and single prediction. So let's choose the single prediction. And here we will change various column values to see how failure type is impacted. So let's change the rotational speed to 141. Hit that update. And here the failure type is no failure. Now let's change the torque to 350 and hit update. And now our failure type is power failure. So our model is working on expected lines. Okay. Now if you go to the share button, it says you can't share quick build models. You must choose standard build to be able to share the models. Now that we are done, we will just delete the model and log out to release Canvas resources. Let's look at SageMaker Studio now. We will look at Amazon SageMaker Studio now. Let's hit the Open Studio button. Okay. And that's our Amazon SageMaker Studio. We have a lot of information on the home screen. There is an open launcher to create notebooks. And under pre-built and automated solutions, we can deploy built-in algorithms and build models from visual interface. For example, AutoML automatically builds, trains, and tunes best ML models. You can kick off a step in the machine learning workflow or use a pre-trained model. We will be using the auto M option to automatically build, train and tune models. So let's select that create auto ML experiment and give this a name. Okay. Let's uh, call it churn experiment. Here we will be predicting whether customer churn will happen or not whether a customer will leave or not based on some past data. Our input data will be available in a S3 location. So let's provide a path to that. Under our S3 bucket, we have a churn subdirectory. Under the churn folder, we have churn.csv file. So this is the data we are going to use. Okay, let's scroll down. We will let that auto create output data location to be true. Okay, let's hit next and choose our target column. These are our columns from the input file. So our target column is churn. By default, all features are used for training. You can deselect a column if you do not want it to be used for training. 
okay now we are ready to hit next our training method will be auto let autopilot automatically decide training method based on data set size now on to deployment settings auto deploy can create an endpoint that deploys your best model and runs inference on the endpoint so let's give it a name now if you scroll down you can select the machine learning problem binary classification regression multi class classification etc so we will keep that as auto and hit next now here we can review all our settings okay. now before we create our experiment let us preview our input data once to understand it better so it has columns like state area code you know, phone plan and so on but our target column is churn so let's look at that so there you can see churn value as true or false okay now we can hit create experiment and this will start the process of training models and models will display here as they are generated and this process is going to take some time so many models will be created and we will be using the best model amongst those okay so meanwhile uh, let's take a look at the job profile this is our experiment job and as you can see the status is in progress and you can review input and output data config job config and so on so we go back to the trials tab so here we can see the list of models that have been already created and we will wait for more models to be created and the best model of these is clearly marked out and the best model has an accuracy of 90% plus let's look at view model details and here under explainability performance artifacts etc you should be able to review a lot of details about the model okay now there is a data exploration notebook so let's take a quick look at that and this is just a read only preview of the data exploration notebook and we could import this notebook to play around with it so there is information about duplicate rows missing values and so on okay let's look at our s3 bucket and here you can see that new folder called churn experiment has been created and it has a lot of information about the experiment that we just ran for example you can find information about all the models and similarly information about validations and the tuning data now we are ready to deploy the model so let's hit deploy model and here we have two options uh, make real time predictions or make batch predictions so let's look at real time predictions in this case the model is deployed to an endpoint However, what we want to do is batch prediction. So let's prepare for that. Okay. Uh, we will choose the instance type that we want to use for our batch prediction job. Okay. So let's choose that. Okay. And followed by S3 location where our prediction test data is uh, located. All right. Similarly, location for our output data. In S3, we have created a new directory called churn test, and our data is in churn test.csv. Let's take a look. We have two rows here where the value for the target churn column will be predicted. Okay, let's hit create batch transform job. So our job is created and the status is in progress. And this is going to take some time and let's wait for the status to turn to completed okay status is completed now now let's look at the prediction result 
under our churn test folder we have a new file called churn test csv dot out so uh, let's download that and open it to look at the result here if you look at the first column the values are false and true so these are the values for our test rows false and true now our test rows were picked up from the original churn dot csv file so let's look at that and the relevant rows are highlighted and you can see the values as false and true here it's the same rows with state ks and in so the predictions of false and true are on expected lines okay now that we are done we are ready to shut down all resources so let's choose the shutdown option and select shutdown all all right so now we can go to s3 and delete our bucket and data files as well if we do not want to keep them and we return to our sage maker dashboard where you can see recent activity before we close here's a question for you what happens if your machine learning data set is too small 